Sam, you don't like any ice cream? I hate ice cream. Wait, Not are even you like serious? A, like a salted caramel ice cream. That's no, what that, I always go that for. That sounds lovely, maybe with an espresso or something, yeah. but I would never like go out of my way to get it. What? Okay. I don't think I knew this about you. I've well, known you a I don't long like time. desserts or sweet stuff. I don't know. I, I just don't ever have the hankering yeah. for it. Like if it's if it's, I'm not going to be impolite about it. Sure. If it's at a party or a birthday or something, <laughs> like I'll have it. But I'm like, oh, no man. cake for me. I'm just like, <laughs> Sam, I uh, could not yeah. possibly be more opposite than that. <laughs> like if I if I'm walking by it, I have to like I'm like, you like pizza, right? It draws me in. See? Yeah, salty, yeah, sweet man. Give me all that garbage. <laughs> All right, and with that, what's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Scoop. Sam Claiborne, hey. and Mark Medina. Hello. And we've got a great show for you this week. We've got some details on why Sony is skipping E3 this year. We're going to okay. talk about... Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, what more do we need to know? Well, I didn't. we didn't know why. <laughs> We, it was yeah, a big question true. mark. Damon has the answers. Well, we have some answers. <laughs> We're going to talk about arcade games. Last week we talked about mm. Metroidvanias. Mm. Where do you fall on the, the term Metroidvania, Justin? I'm for it. I'm pro Metroidvania. There's Even no though such thing as an arcade game. <laughs> <laughs> I do think they should Even just though, be called Metroid likes. Yeah, that's that was the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. The, Met- Castlevania is unfairly getting credit for something it didn't actually. That's fair. They're my two favorite games of all time, though. So I don't really. <laughs> so also, it, also, who cares? <laughs> It's just oh, video games. There is if that. you say language is just voices coming out of your mouth and construing meaning to someone yeah. else, yep. and if you say Metroidvania, everyone understands what you're talking about, and so that's all. If that Justin really was here last week, that conversation would have been much shorter. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. I better. I got to be careful with that because that sums up much of what we talk about. <laughs> that's actually true. That's actually yeah. true. But first. Far Cry New Dawn yep. should be getting about out there in your into your grubby little mitts by the time uh, mm. this podcast airs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've week. been playing a lot of it, actually, and reviewing it for IGN. Mark's mm-hmm. played a lot of it. It's been in these and, grubby mitts for like a week. Yeah, and you can talk about it. Uh, well, by the time this episode, that's goes awesome. By, we're yeah. coming to you from the future or the yeah, past. We're coming to you from the Whatever. past. However, yeah. it works. And uh, as of this recording, I haven't I haven't settled on a score yet, but I like it. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's definitely like a scaled back experience. It's a budget price title at forty dollars at launch, and it definitely feels like a mm. little bit more of a budget title in, in some. Well, way. I like it. It's fun. Is like a seven point two, I think, on our scale. Think so. I That's like what the it's fun. Right I like it, that, comma, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, right below that is I just like it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a seven point zero. Yeah. yeah, and then the, the seven point four is. Uh, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. that checks out. Yeah, that sounds about right. One day uh, we're going to write all 100 of them. <laughs> that's really good <laughs> that's for April so Fool's Day. A new we IGN do. scale. Yeah. I kind of love that. <laughs> Which one is like, eh. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have to cut that part out. Five yeah, five. I was going to say, yeah, if we run this by, that idea by a couple of people yeah, and they like yeah, it, and, and they, this part will end up be yep, cutting out. Yep. And uh, so if you're hearing this, nobody thought that was a good idea. <laughs> 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 Tina said no. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, Far Cry New Dawn, a uh, standalone sequel to Far Cry 5, a game which I liked a lot. Reviewed that last year. And I actually liked the ending to Far Cry 5. I might be in the minority there. Some people, uh, that might be an unpopular well, opinion. Let but us I know what everybody. happens and we'll tell you if we like it. Wait, yeah. which ending? I'm assuming the, the, There's like the a now ending. canonical yeah, ending. The now canonical ending, which has been, in order to even know about what New Dawn is, you have to know it. So I don't think, I don't think it's a spoiler. It's We're going to spoil Far Cry 5 for you. The yeah. bad guy wins, kind yeah. of, and it turns out he's right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and I liked that. It's like wasn't a happy ending, uh, and then with a nuclear holocaust and uh, the judgment day that uh, the bad guy had been proclaiming was going to happen all along ended up happening, even though he didn't really cause it himself. And then you're like stuck in an, in an underground fallout shelter with just him. It's just you two mm-hmm. at the end of the game. Right. Roll credits. I thought that was pretty cool. Pretty wild. Yep. Are so, there robots in uh, what New Dawn? Yeah. Not robots. No. Okay. No Whistling robots. 20 questions <laughs> where I really want to know what the qualification is there. <laughs> Not robots. No, 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 no. But no. GoBots. <laughs> you know, they do have GoBots. <laughs> <laughs> turns out you can get the GoBots license for pretty cheap these yeah, days. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Ubisoft. It turns into a pair of binoculars. You use it in the game. <laughs> yeah. Those are your binoculars. Yeah. Uh, New Dawn is 17 years later and nature has bounced back. Mm-hmm. What that means is it kind of just looks like you're just back in the same place. Mm-hmm. And, it is the, yeah. and it is the same map, just now there are pink flowers everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere. Pink flowers, yeah. yeah. It's like a way prettier game. It's very... It's, it's prettier? I, 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 I don't think it's I was prettier. watching you could do your graphics comparison. I thought yeah. like, man, Far Cry 5 looked pretty photoreal. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I guess it's like prettier in the sense if you like. You mean like the color palette? I'm the kind of guy colorful. that takes a picture with his phone and then like cranks the colors up because I like to make the grass real green and see you know the colors on the mountain. So yeah, like it's the just Shire. Like way more color. Like You're quite Shire. an aesthete. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I kind of like that idea of like it's it's. I'm just gonna blow past that. <laughs> 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 it's I kind of like the idea that it's like uh, post-apocalyptic, but it's not that normal grungy look. You it's see, like soft post-apocalyptic. Yeah, you it's still like everything's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the world's really pretty. Yeah, yeah. But there are these highwaymen that are trying to like uh, you know take control of the area, and they're basically Mad Max mm-hmm. like yeah. punks, but yeah. not robots. Not robots. Uh, no, Gobots. They call them like helmet heads or something. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, always have some, who agrees on the names for these? What, like Highwaymen? Or just like an evil faction. that They're like, oh, they're called the bleh. And it's like, who who decided that? Did the writers. A, did they the have writers a, of the game? Did they have a council meeting? Like in the lore of the game. Like mm-hmm. everyone got oh, together. Oh, in the lore of the game. Yeah, oh, like yeah. there's no telephones anymore, but somehow everyone knows. Oh, motorcycle gangs all have names. You yeah. Know, yeah. Like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Just driving on the highway, they're like, what should we be called? <laughs> Anyway, it feels like more Far Cry, specifically more Far Cry Five, and I th- that that's fun to yeah. me. It's yeah. uh, the story goes to some very silly places, but whatever. Taking over outposts, going on treasure hunts, and then the new expeditions that actually take you away to new you locations. Go to Alcatraz. Go to Alcatraz, yeah. one of them. Go to an amusement park. Go to a crashed satellite uh, location. Go on a big boat. Yeah. I feel like that was their way to like have their cake and eat it too. Or like, look, you know, it's a forty dollar game. It's out a year later, or a little bit over a year later. So um, you know, it has to reuse the same map. But we don't want to do, like, we also want to do this other kind of neat stuff. So yeah. like, mm-hmm. just have them go somewhere else. Like, it's fine. Yeah. How's uh, how's Alcatraz doing in the future? Oh no, it's gone. And you can see a 360 view of the of the bay uh, yeah. around you there too. How are it's we all, doing? It's all gone. You fly out through a, a broken Golden Gate Bridge. In the, what? Why? Because hmm. of the nuclear attacks. But I well, I guess I thought it was only in Montana. No, it's like yeah. all over the Pacific. Oh, the Pacific. oh Far Cry is really going to be different from here on out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I like it a lot. I think my, you had a lot of yeah. fun with it too. Yeah, Michael. no, I thought it was really fun. We, we, me, you, and uh, Brian Altano all came in, and yeah. we were like, "Yeah, it's we like all beat it over the weekend." That's mm-hmm. it's super it's a fairly not short. Long. The campaign is fairly short. <laughs> is uh, there a trippy drug s- sequence? Yes, there is yeah. a trippy drug, but it yeah. goes even further. Than that. It goes beyond trippy drugs to just real world. Like, okay. I, I don't want to spoil stuff. Sure, I want to play sure. it, but it just go, it, There's some definitely some. They're cool off sequences. the rails at this yeah. point. Yeah, but no, I thought it was really fun. Yeah. Can you really talk cool. about the wildlife a little bit? There's a lot of wildlife, and it's all, I guess, the... Mutated, I'm assuming. Well, but they're not, like, crazy. So, okay. Yeah, it's just some like, are. They have, like, moss on them. Yeah, but it's yeah. not, like, really, really what? out there. And, and that's not... even on them? Moss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> moss. <laughs> okay. So, in the future, animals yeah. will be mossy. Yes. And yep. they will have, they will be able to withstand three shots from a rocket launcher. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Like a bear. A bear sure. can live through three shots of a rocket launcher. That's what everyone knows. That's what happens to a nuclear <laughs> well, bear. But that's the, that's evolution, right? It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. kill 99.9% <clears throat> of a species with rocket yeah. launcher. And then the point one that can survive that will mate and carry on its genetics. Yeah. That's like what this yeah. game has in common with Fallout 76, by the way, the Venn diagram of how those games overlap. The animals can take a lot of rocket launchers. Yeah, the hits. nuclear yeah. blast made them stronger. I bet the animals are weirder in Fallout 76 yeah. than in uh, New Dawn. They, they have multiple the heads in Fallout 76. I uh, love the monster design. How many does uh, one in animal 76? need? 76? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had a Mothman. They did have a Mothman. Mm-hmm. Justin, Justin knows that guy. Why, what are you looking at me for? <laughs> but you're just the only person I know who's actually seen a Mothman in yeah. real life. I don't want to get on get into this. Okay, sure. All right, all right, we won't get into it. Um, <laughs> Confused. He, he's not saying Moss Man. No, <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, Sam, have you ever played a Far Cry game? Yeah, of course. Which ones? I played three, and then I played Blood Dragon, which I oh, loved. Yeah. yeah, Blood Dragon is very cool. Um, this one is like it goes to like weird places like Blood Dragon, but it it's harder for me to swallow because Far Cry Five was supposed to be a, a, supposed mm-hmm. to be sort of a realistic. Mm-hmm. I think the fact that setting. they like I know it sucks to buy another forty dollar game on top of like. You know, you already own the game, and instead of it being DLC, yeah. but I do like the reusing of the maps they've been very creative with since Blood Dragon. Mm-hmm. And Primal yep. was so cool. Like, yeah. I mean, that was such a good idea to do a spin off that way. I really liked Primal. And I know, like, in execution, these aren't working out well every time, but like, it's cool to see teams not be, you know, dispersed to work on other things, but yeah. like, mm-hmm. keep on like iterating and do fun ideas. Yeah. yeah. I think they're delivering on the promise of, you know, not, I feel like every 10 or $20 DLC has left me a little bit unfulfilled. Mm. It's just sort of like, it's over too fast. And it's like, well, so. Except horse armor. 
<laughs> Except was, obviously with the caveat that horse armor was a must. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this feels like a nice sort of middle ground. You know, forty bucks, new campaign. It's not too long. It reuses the map, but the map feels different. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't feel necessarily like a retread. Like to me, that that strikes a good balance. But I have not played this game yet, so maybe I'll yeah. feel differently after. Yeah. Going hands on. Yeah. I think if you like. If you like Far Cry, uh, I think you're. This is more. You'll find what you're gonna. Fans fans of the genre. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's true. This might be the game that I'm most interested in. Uh, Jump Force and Jump Force Crackdown, Metro Anthem. Anthem is early release. Anthem is released with Anthem is like yeah, it's like the the EA premiere starts. If you want to play Anthem, you can start playing this weekend. Basically, yeah, gotcha. I have a chart. That game has like four release dates. Put the chart up. (laughs) (laughs) Show them the chart. All right, moving on. Uh, last year, we learned that Sony would not be attending E3 2019, which frees up our Monday evening to do whatever we want, I guess. Yeah, it's we, we won't have any work to do. <laughs> yeah. That's we'll always, just sit around and do nothing. It's always I such think a we highlight should, of E3. What a bummer, man. It is a bummer. Uh, I mean, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what well, I don't know, like, um, interest starts to build over the weekend. Yeah. You go through EA, you go through uh, Microsoft, and then on the day of Monday, you've got uh, Ubisoft in there. There's a couple other little conferences, and it sort of like swells and sort of mm-hmm. yeah. uh, crescendos into Sony's conference. But now that's gone. It's not uncommon for Sony's press conference to be our peak E3 traffic. Yeah, yep. yeah. Well, that's not always. Well, the case, it's but. tough for me because I I started in my first E3 was in 2016, and 2016 had that really good conference. Yeah. That's when they revealed Death Stranding, and it was just like hmm. that was my first time in the war room with everybody, it's and everybody's just watching this giant TV, and all this insane doubting. stuff is happening. It is. Yeah. It was so cool it's when they showed battlefront and all that and then the next one was still like a stage pre- presentation but it, uh, there was a little bit of audio issues and they didn't have enough to show and it was still cool but it was not as and then last year's was that like we're in the church and I now we're going here at and, that one yeah yeah because yeah. it just seemed like a weird just like destin said he mess. went he said it was not that fun <laughs> yeah he said it was i would have liked watch, it for that though. watch the last of us and then now get up and 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 a thousand people are walking yeah. to this new thing. It's like the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Yeah. It's like most of that ride is just hurting. Mm. <laughs> well, so it's, now it's like this year it's like nothing. And so it's like yeah. it's like I, I'll never get to relive. Like it's just gotten progressively like. Well, never. You know? oh, that's life, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it's just down. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Everything gets worse. That's yeah. True. It never gets Everything. better. <laughs> uh, well, now uh, Sony's Sean Layden is. Uh, Shed a little insight into into why they pulled out of E3 this year. This is coming from an internet or an interview with CNET. He says, "Now we have an event in February called Destination PlayStation. I didn't get my invite to that. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is where we bring all retailers and third party partners to come hear the story for the year. Mm. They're making purchasing dis- discussions in February. June now is just too late to have a Christmas holiday discussion with retailers. So, sure, I get that. And, you know, yeah, when E3 was started, uh, they they didn't they weren't live streaming any of the conferences, yeah. and it was completely." Well, mostly like a, about like a trade show. getting retailers in there to show what games they're going to be able to sell for the yeah. holidays. How many right. copies of, you know, whatever, Crash 2 does uh, yeah. Target need to order for exactly. this holiday season? E3 still does. The, yeah. It still serves that purpose, right? Well, but at least well, it needs he's to saying, earlier now. So he's yeah. saying now retail has really dropped off from, from an E3 standpoint. And he continues, and journalists now with the internet and the fact that 24-7 there is game news, it's lost its impact around that. Mm. But I'm not sure I agree with that. Yeah, Yeah, I don't either. It's the events. E3 is still an event. As big as it's ever been. For for gamers, I think we look forward to that event all year long. That's like our Christmas, our Super Bowl. I think that's totally a miscalculation on that part. I think so. Well, and as media, we plan for that event almost like all year long. Like we've been doing E3 meetings for like Uh, months already. uh, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Layden, uh, Mr. Sean continues. So the trade show became a trade show without a lot of trade activity. The world has changed. The world has changed. Oh boy, it's changing. But E3 hasn't necessarily changed with it. And with our decision to do fewer games, bigger games over longer periods of time, we got to a point where June of 2019 was not a time for us to have a new thing to say. So yeah, I mean, like, this is it like seems like a this year. Thing, this is though. yeah. Also <laughs> that, and also it seems like people were speculating. It's like. They've shown us uh, Last right. of Us Part Two. We've seen Ghost of Tsushima. Well, everything they Days showed Gone us last out. year, they're just gonna like they they saw the headlines. It's yeah. like they're showing us yeah. the exact same yeah. game. They would literally again. have to show so us they the don't same have, four games. They don't have anything like new to reveal yet. It's what it seems like to me. Yeah, yeah, bummer. I mean, I understand. I just not having enough games. It's like Nintendo skated by with one game two years in a row. They did that. <laughs> mm-hmm. and they were fine, and they won E three still with Zelda. Yeah. 
and then uh, Mario. Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Mario. all you need is the the one the one one game to rule them all is really all you need. Sony, here's all you got to do: just make one of the greatest games of all time, mm-hmm. and then, then or you're they could just make 15 new AAA games. They could do that too. That's yeah. what they did every other year. Yeah, <laughs> Nintendo I finally caught up with them. I guess is what happened, right? Uh, I like this uh, part where he says, well, I don't like this part. He says, we are progressing the conversation about how do we transform E3 to be more relevant. Mm. Can E3 transition more into a fan festival of gaming where we don't gather there to drop the new bomb? Can it just be a celebration of games and of panels where we bring game developers closer to fans? So, PAX? He he mentions, like, like, a la Comic-Con as well. I mean, that's the direction that E3, I don't know how many years, two, three years now it's been moving. Inviting the public public hours and public days. Um, uh, They see how big Gamescom is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think. But there's a difference between attending E3 and having a press conference. And I'm confused about the press conference side of it because that is something that is just to look forward to, even more so than, like, yeah, Sony has a booth on the floor. It's good for marketers and journalists and the fans that attend but like it's it's the press conference that we're missing out on yeah, it's entertainment sure. it's it's really fun to watch mm-hmm. it is really fun and now that's something like that's something that was like taken away from us you know that's why a a bummer because the console wars are too nice you've been uh talking about this yeah the t- uh, this lately. morning sean Layden had time him. to go to dice and have a press conference <laughs> <laughs> and uh he went there and uh he had, gave a talk and he showed the the nintendo switch on screen and talked about uh, how we really need nintendo nintendo is really healthy for the market oh man then, sony uh, can you imagine sony 20 years ago would have been like we're gonna <laughs> bury so them <laughs> we're gonna make sure that they don't ever exist again yeah <laughs> and they would accuse them all of being yeah. like you know bad people yeah that's called way. dumping and it's illegal <laughs> it's illegal <laughs> <laughs> and then he did the same with Microsoft. Yeah. I mean, I love this stuff. I mean, it's really cool to see the, the industry change this way. But they said he talked about the accessibility controller and the Super Bowl commercial, you know, that everybody loved. Yeah. And I uh, was very positive on it instead of uh, taking shots. So I think the time is right to disrupt the market with just a really mean advertising campaign. Be a real jerk. Yeah. May- maybe Which nobody expected when Sega showed up with that, you know? <laughs> maybe instead of uh, console wars, we should call them console friendships now. Console friendships, yeah. console babalities. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess it's easy for Sony to have that tact when they're number one, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Oh, the console friendships. Yeah. Will it ever end? Maybe <laughs> it's almost it's almost like a little <laughs> condescending. It's like, we need you, Nintendo. And Microsoft, you're doing great, too. It's like, you wouldn't be saying that if yeah. you didn't have the number <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a little head pat. Keep up the but, good work. But it happened you're at doing the, great, sweetie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it happened at the Game Awards also, right? The first time they got them yeah. on stage all together. Everybody yeah. was nice with each other and... Yeah, that's true. These companies have to want to. Anytime a new console comes out, that's an opportunity for people to switch their allegiances, right? Mm-hmm. Like fortunes rise and fall based off your console launch. And like you can't run a multi billion dollar business that way. Like they have to want to put an end to that. Like I think that's part of what mm-hmm. these like half generations are about, right? Is like let's just keep the continuity going. Let's keep people in the PlayStation ecosystem forever. We actually have an, uh, an email from one of our listeners here right on this topic. So let's check in with the listeners. Hey, listeners. Hey, listeners. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com, just like Dave Chardo did. And he says, hey, Omega Cops, just got news that a new Nintendo Direct is coming tomorrow, and I can already feel the Ooh. dopamine flowing. Ooh. I love these events. It's like a bunch of surprise mini E3s spread throughout the year. It allows Nintendo to, to do some solid media attention whenever they release one. It is also a fantastic way to deal with the issue of discoverability on the absolutely flooded eShop. So, why doesn't Sony or Microsoft adopt this model? It doesn't seem that difficult. Maybe the user base for those machines just aren't into getting their info this way. I honestly have no idea how Nintendo is the only company doing these directs. Well, first of all, Microsoft is doing them. They have yep. Inside Xbox, yeah. which they do they, monthly. Which they started that is very similar to. So check those out. But not as good. They're a little different. They're, they're too like, long. They're man. way too long. And just they're very of, long. Yeah. And, and yeah, the, they're not scripted in the sense of like, yeah. like the Nintendo Direct is just a recorded video that they just push play on. And yeah. where this is like a live show. They're cool, but like. But that's the absolute intention of them is to control their own marketing information yeah. and announce games and announce DLC packs. Yeah. It's the same thing. 
And it company, sounds like Sony wants to. Well, that's well, maybe they, Sony also has their PlayStation blog. So in some ways, they were kind of ahead of the curve. They yeah, were a little bit, true. you know, they do hired, have the PlayStation blog up hired every people day, away from IGN even, yeah. you know, where they're previewing, you know, PS4 games and trying to be, you know, trying to, uh, uh, you know, get a leg up on their marketing message that way. But they didn't quite, it's interesting to see Nintendo sort of come from a position of being behind and then kind of leapfrog them in their mm. thinking where, mm. um, you know, even Major Nelson was around for years and years and years as sort of like a friend on the couch mouthpiece. Yeah, for like I what guess cool there stuff was is coming out. There was an inside Xbox that you watched on Xbox yeah. Live, right? Yeah, but then Nintendo with the directs really cracked the code on it. I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so too. They are terrible. Like, I mean, oh, what do like, you mean? Just directs? like the production of them, they're so fun to watch, and I love them. Like, I, I think directs are great, but like the people are so wooden a lot of the time. Please mm-hmm. understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll show I mean, they're like, like they're Japanese developers, and they're, they'll, they'll yeah. carefully describe gameplay while they show gameplay. And mm-hmm. I just I can't believe I think it's like, great. I love the cheesiness. I, I, like I love it. Awada like talking directly mm-hmm. to you. And yeah, what I what I like is just how quick they are. It's like yeah, this right. one's announced to be thirty five minutes. They'll show just like an onslaught of games. Yeah. Yeah. They'll give an update on everything, and then it's over. <laughs> the tone of them is always like you know. Please understand, making video games is very challenging, and you know we're uh, doing our best. We're working very hard to bring yeah. you Animal Crossing in we, 2019. We hope you will look forward to it. Yeah, it's great. And now, uh, when these are announced, we see them trending on Twitter, like yeah. Nintendo yeah. Direct. The word, yeah. like they, they've got these things to work. Mm-hmm. I just think they're not quite up to what their production level could be for maybe. like reaching new audiences and maybe being an entertaining thing in itself. But it does what it needs to do. Reggie always comes out and has some horrible moment. <laughs> uh, I think they're really fun. I don't think they should ever take the place of E3, a big E3 press conference, though. I know they have for Nintendo. Yeah. I'd still rather have like a live conference. But. Yeah. Uh, this is Atif. He says, love the show, and I love listening to you guys, especially Damien and CJ. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I was very intrigued by the gameplay versus story discussion you had on the last episode, and it got me thinking, first, Justin, which, which keeps you coming back to a game more, uh, gameplay or story? 100% gameplay. Yeah, we were, we were mostly the same, too. Uh, Atif says, I don't care about either of those elements as much as I care about character progression. I loved Destiny because I kept wanting to increase my light. Yeah, numbers go up, man. Loved the Final Fantasy series because they have an amazing character progression system. Loved God of War because of the skill unlocks. Kingdom Hearts because of the abilities I keep unlocking. So on and so forth. My question to you guys is, do any of you feel the same way? You are doing an amazing job. Keep it up. So character pro- pro- progression, I think, would fall under gameplay still. Yeah. Uh, Just a specific... A specific part of the gameplay? I, I, I kind of take it as like the game is over and yet you're still playing kind of thing. Like Anthem is is like a fun game to play, but like even after you've done every mission, like for instance, I played the demo and there's three missions and then the strike. And yet I still found a way to play those missions a ton of times because it's like mm. my character was just getting stronger and stronger and that's what <laughs> was kind of driving me. And the second I hit the cap, I was just done. Yeah, Gamers that. love to see numbers go up. They love to fill bars yep. and check yep. off boxes. <laughs> That's all. That's all any of us really want. Yeah, I think I talked about this last week. Uh, I said I like the loop of a game, and I really mm-hmm. like uh, like Simply the Night. You uh, find a point in Castlevania games where you really want an item, and you might have to kill an enemy thirty times to get that item, and it feels so good when it randomly drops it. Like I love that feeling, mm-hmm. and uh, it sounds crazy. Like put, just writing that out, it's like this game sounds so repetitive and boring, yeah. but I, that's what draw, draws me into that game. We also, like, so, yeah, it's cool. Some ga- game developer within the last decade figured out, like, instead of giving someone an item that they want, what if we gave them a chance to get the item that they want? And then, mm-hmm. like, that was, in some ways, kind of the beginning of the end, the beginning <laughs> of how we ended up with, you know, smash cut to 15 years later, and we have loot boxes everywhere, yeah. and it's horrible. <laughs> so it's like, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. But I, I played I World of Warcraft for years, and, like, yeah. that thought of, like, yes, the boss yeah. would get down, and, you're like, oh, it's, it's like, best, that right? wasn't the time to celebrate. Like, everybody <laughs> was, like... You know, you'd see like Ragnarok just to like topple over, and it's just like, okay, but what does he got? And you're yeah. waiting for that pop up, yeah. And then you, it pops up, and you're like, you're either very happy or you're very sad. And you watch like YouTube montages of people just freaking out over loot drops. Yeah, you get the war glaives of Azanoth. The problem is like- this is still not over because most of the time back then there was forty people, and so it's like some really cool like the war glaives drop. You had to roll like on the loot. Ro- you had to roll to see if you'd get it. And- what do you mean? Rough. Roll. It wasn't so. Just they like, would, there's 40 people in a raid, yeah. and four gear pieces drop, and so you, you, the, the guild would fight over them. And they would either you would either roll you would either roll dice, and whoever got the high roll won. You could literally do. But where slash do they go roll. until you roll? 
And they just they're like they in just a, sit they in, sit in a table. They're like. sitting on the box. And if yeah. you're a jerk, you can just snatch them. Though. No, no, no. Like they're no. they're controlled by the raid leader. So they would have different. Like yeah. most guilds would just roll for them. Like hope you get lucky. Hope you get what you want. But they had other systems. They had of like, DKP dragon. Yeah, like whoever hasn't like gotten a piece of gear in the longest amount of time can get one. So it seems like today's uh, version of that is just that everyone gets loot, right? Yeah. I mean, like when we, uh, Mark and I were playing. Uh, Far Cry New Dawn co-op mm-hmm. earlier today, mm-hmm. and I think we could both loot everything. Most games yeah. prevent both like yeah. everybody player like, griefing and stuff yeah. like that. Like individualized loot is dropping for each player yeah. in matches. Yeah. I, think- we, I played a lot of the forest, and and it didn't take us long to realize yeah. like uh, my wife would crack open like backpacks and stuff like that, and then I would look, and I'm like, oh, I can just yeah. all the stuff is still here. I was like, why aren't you taking everything? She's like. I'm taking everything. I'm like, yeah. oh, cool. <laughs> Great. I think World of Warcraft is the first time I can remember experiencing randomized loot in a loot table. And then yeah. you can probably draw a line between that and the loot boxes we have today. And, you know, just uh, player attention <laughs> game systems that are designed to sort of keep you around and keep you playing their game. It'd be great yeah. if divorce worked the same way. Honey, I'm leaving you. I'm taking everything. All right. I'm also taking everything. Yeah. <laughs> just split it in two. It's fine. How much DKP does she have? I that love decides who gets whatever. Atif, that's why I play a lot of uh, idle games and incremental games, mm-hmm. like games like Cookie Clicker. It's like the numbers just keep getting bigger. It's amazing. What's not to like? It's true. I play Cookie Clicker for the story. <laughs> there is that's a little bit exception. of a weird that's, story that's in that. That's the game you play for the story. This is Jack. Kind of it a says, lore hound. <laughs> cookie. What's it called? Lore hound? Cl- yeah. Cookie Clicker? I just made that up. Yeah, for cookie lore hound's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. That's our new name for people who really love stories. And the lore hounds. Yeah. Okay. People who play video games with stories. Yeah. yeah, that probably exists. Love you. Lore hounds. Uh, this is Jack. He says, love listening to the show each week. Keep up the good work. This one is primarily for Sam and Justin. Oh. Absolutely no offense intended for anyone else. All right, see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> offense taken. Get bent, Mark. From, <laughs> from listening to you both talk, it's very clear you understand exactly what you like and what you don't like and uh, what it is about things you enjoy. I've come to realize that my critical thinking skills are terrible, and I struggle to express much beyond, I liked it, or, yeah, it was good. Uh, I was hoping you could offer some advice on how to approach thinking more deeply about things and how to evaluate my feelings beyond the basics, including merits and faults outside of that initial feeling. Uh, That's a complicated question. How can Uh, Jack Jack develop his critical thinking skills? My my tip on that is to read criticism. And when I, one of my favorite things to do since the first time I was ever on the internet is to read reviews. And uh, when I found video game reviews on IGN, like every review all the way down the page for anything, I like reading them. Mm -hmm. It's just entertainment. Like I I like how I like, I just, that's what I like to do with my time. Mm -hmm. And so that really got me thinking about how I think about games. And that was like a big first step. Mm. Yeah, well, I definitely take that as a compliment. So thanks, Jack. I guess I don't view myself. I, I don't know. This is I. This is why I always had such a hard time reviewing games because it's hard for me to separate out. Like a game is just your opinion, right? Mm-hmm. But there's games well, that I like yeah. that I can also sort of recognize. Like maybe this game isn't so good. Like maybe it's bad. Or like you see this more with like film. Like what's the best bad film you love? And then it's like, but is it responsible to give that film a good score then? And so. I don't know. You 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 do, but then you can fall into a trap of like you don't want to review a game for some imagined audience. Well, like I loved it, but I don't think other people will. So maybe I need to give it a mediocre score so yeah. I can get you in trouble too. Mm-hmm. Um, so so it was. I don't really review games anymore, but whenever I did, that was always a struggle for me was to try to figure out what am I liking about this, or you know, if I'm not liking it, you know, it, it, it just just trying to. Yeah, trying to trying to understand how it all fits together and how it all fits and works. It, it was really important for me with this job to get a job in the industry in which I could try a lot of games mm-hmm. because when you are just a person and you have a job, it's really hard to buy <coughs> a lot of games and rentals are not really very popular right now. Steam is really helping with this, mm-hmm. but I want to try everything. Like that's why mm-hmm. I've played Kingdom Hearts for the last couple of weeks and I I, I want to know why I don't like something or why I think something's bad instead of ever speaking from yeah. a position of ignorance. And I, I'm just not that. I, I think that's really, I, it's really important. It's the same reason I like watching credits and games. Like people are making these, and I respect that. And people like them, and I respect that. And I think that's an attitude that I wish we got more from with people uh, being uh, uh, crappy with our reviewers. Mm. And that uh, you know, I think nobody here is trying to hurt your feelings about the games you like. That's just not the perspective anybody has. Mm. And uh, people take re- reviews and criticism really personally. 
Mm-hmm. There's also an argument to be made. This is increasingly the case as I get older. That there's just like there's games that are great that I just they're not for me. And like you know, Resident Evil, like that's the example of like I don't like spooky games. But there's other stuff. There's other genres that I'm just not into. You know that I don't like. The more time that passes, I spend more and more time with just like weird PC games. And like it can feel a little bit like does Justin just have weird taste in games? But then you find some YouTuber that's playing Factorio and putting up you know huge numbers on his channel. You know, so it's like I think there's a lot of gamers out there like. Like, the internet has really shown you that like everything's really fractured and if you just want to mm-hmm. play crafting games or just want to play survival games or battle royale or whatever like you can seek someone out that sort of lines up with whatever your own way of thinking about video games is yeah i love factorio so factorio is dope <laughs> when's it coming to switch Oh, dude, I don't know about that one. Mm-hmm. I also have a tendency to switch back and forth. Like, I'll do some indie stuff that's, like, really weird but kind of rough around the edges. And then I'll swing back to, like, okay, I just want a more hand-holdy, polished, you know, AAA experience now that's not going to make me think too hard. And that's pinging back and forth between the two has been has yeah. worked for me for years. Yeah, I got, I got really addicted to Blackout, and I've been playing n- almost nothing but that. But now playing Far Cry has kind of – it actually kind of broke the addiction Yeah, in the sense of, like – now that I'm done with Far Cry, I kind of want to like jump into Metro. Like, mm. I kind of miss playing games just by myself. <laughs> oh, for sure. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like eating food, right? Like, you can really, really like a type of food. It doesn't mean you want to have it every night. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true. To circle back to developing critical thinking skills, you, there's college majors for that. Literary criticism is one I took a lot of classes in, and you know it, that will teach you how to do it, and you still might not be good at it. Because you really need to want to do it. And if you don't have, you know, strong opinions about video games, that's okay. Like, you're probably going to be, you're probably going to get along with people better. It's also a lot more work than it just is. than just playing a video game and just enjoying it. It totally is. And not having to explain why you enjoyed this or that or oh. didn't. You the know? feeling so of, much more the work. feeling of playing a game for review is so different than just playing a game for leisure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And when we hire uh, members of our editorial staff, we look for people that are critical and can think critically about games and really interview them about that and read their writing to make sure they can do it. And w- I've worked with young writers who uh, learn it, and I've worked with young writers who just have it. Mm. So you can do both. Yeah, that's true. Do you take notes when you review games? I used to, and now I don't. Same. Now I like to just I used to, and I don't anymore. When I finish the game and I start to write the view, it's like, what are the what are the things that that really stick out to me that that you know made a made an impression on me? You know, I mm-hmm. just obsessively repeat things I want to say in my head while I'm reviewing a game, and mm-hmm. then I start usually writing during that that yeah. playing. I have a little dialogue with myself, like a crazy person. Yeah, I totally have that. I think when I first That's started, though, I would just I would take yeah endlessly detailed notes about every little thing that was happening in the game. And yeah. Come to realize you don't really need. Well, to we used that. to write differently. IGN used to be five-page reviews. That's true. With a bunch of details, mm-hmm. just because there's not a lot of information out there, and previews were really like that. Yeah. So, like, I remember going to preview events and like filling a notebook and then being like, "I can't read my writing yeah, for this dude. one thing." What was I like? Well, that then actually it used important. to be like, "This is how good the sound design is. This is how good the graphics are." And then yeah. take all those, average them together, and that's how. No, good no, the game it was never an average. Was never an average. Oh, well, well, this is not an average. That, yeah, that I was a children. Average. I was a child back then. <laughs> but when I first, when I was just reading IGN for the first time, it said not an average. I took that to mean, oh, it's a better than average it's game. It's better than average. Uh, <laughs> it's not an average game. Every game is better than average. It's like, IGN wow, this said, one is also not, not an, average. an average. It's not your average game. That's a really funny reading of that disclaimer. That's that's how long IGN's ago. been around, though. Is that I you mean, can yeah. be that young? I was young and dumb it. enough to misunderstand that. Yep. This is Justin from Snowy Idaho. Not me. He says, hey, Omega Cops, got a question for you guys. I often hear you talk about games that are arcadey, and I was wondering what that meant exactly. I went to arcades as a kid, played games my entire life, but I'm not quite sure what this particular adjective means in the video game world. I've been able to learn what almost every other term used by you guys means when describing games such as shmup, beat-em-up, metroidvania, or just metroid-like, wink, wink. But I still haven't been able to quite figure out what arcadey means exactly. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can shed some light on this term for me. As always, thanks for everything. Your podcast has been a great addition to my life for the better part of a year now, and I love your content. To me, I take it as like not simmy, basically. And I can give mm-hmm. a couple examples. Uh, PUBG versus Blackout. Like in PUBG, if you need to heal yourself, you have to stop, you have to crouch down, you have to take time. In, in Blackout, you literally just 
throw a needle in your arm and you're just sprinting and jumping over stuff like so you think or, it's downtime related i think i think it's realism like realism related realism definitely realism related mm-hmm. uh, something like uh one franchise that is both is uh forza so you have forza motorsport mm-hmm. that's uh forza motorsport yeah. is way more simmy like mm-hmm. the, you, the cars feel more like cars and what a wonderful you, illustration of the concept of simmy versus arcadia i'm not being <laughs> sarcastic because that that franchise bounces back and yeah. forth well, because then then you have uh, Horizon, which is is just you know pull the triggers and your car doesn't slide as much because that kind of stuff is it's just it's just more forgivable. Mm-hmm. And so I guess I kind of take it like that. It's just you different know. goals, yeah, different uh, levels of how punishing the game is if you make a mistake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tend to think of it in terms of like a, a smaller scope game, like. Uh, like an older, like an arcade game that was meant to be played in shorter sessions. It's not telling a grand epic story. There's not an open world to explore. Uh, you know, games were like that until the NES became popular and home gaming became more popular. And then they realized if we keep, if if we put out just an arcade game, people are going to finish this in an afternoon. So we need to like actually start writing stories, build out larger adventures, allow them to save their progress and come back to it later. Mm-hmm. But I think of like modern games like Spelunky is still an, an arcadey mm-hmm. game. I think of mm-hmm. fighting games are arcadey. I think a game can still be really long and epic and be arcadey, but it, it, it's about how like how much gameplay are they designing around. Like yeah. a, a, an arcade game has to have a, a probably a bite-sized or a smaller scale sort of gameplay experience that then is just repeated. Like in a beat 'em up, how many moves do you have? Like three, yeah. you know, yeah. but they Hunter stretch it out over eight levels, and it still feels fun, and it's designed in such a way that that repetition doesn't necessarily like wear you down. So yeah, I think I think arcade games are repetitive, but not necessarily in like a negative way. Like I'd like to find a more positive version of that word. Yeah, like, one thing you guys haven't brought up yet is the score and like course, yeah. in in the idea of an arcade game and a quarter op arcade game, a coin op arcade game is that you put in your quarter and you last as long as possible. Mm-hmm. And that's short mm-hmm. because they're trying to tune it for two and a half minutes back then, yeah. which is really short. Yeah. Uh, so think about that. You have to, lo- the loop has to start over in two and a half minutes, but you have to have a goal that's outside of that loop, which is a score. So I think uh, games that are arcadey that are not score based, like a, a competitive shooter, still have that loop, like two, mm-hmm. two, two minutes to seven minutes for a round. Right. And what are you aiming for at the end? Well, you're aiming for your character uh, progression now these days mm-hmm. to go up, and that's similar to getting. Well, it's true because like score PUBG, up. like the circle collapses are like four minutes apart, mm-hmm. where in Black Ops, like the longest one is like two and a half minutes, yeah. and they get just it's it's a faster mm-hmm. pace is I guess kind of how I I kind of take it. We also, easier to pick up. We skipped over the obvious, which is you know more of an emphasis on like Twitch based skill. You know, it's not mathematical skill or planning mm-hmm. or anything yeah. like that you know um, that's also time constrained because like yeah. if you don't act in a, an arcade game you will die yeah right you, you can't pressure, just stop. constant pressure on you mm-hmm. yeah that's a really good point yeah. you know there's a place in pac-man in the maze where you can yeah. go take pac-man and you just stop yeah and the ghost will never get you you can go it's take a the, bathroom break it's in the lower right you have to show me where that is interesting Isn't that funny you really don't have to move pac-man at all no wow <laughs> You can just leave. That's like a high score tactic, so people can and then uh, have a breather for a sec. There's, there's uh, for games that actually require you to, you know, not die, like Asteroids. Hmm. Uh, to get a high score run, you can play that game for 17 hours or something, whatever it is. It's hours and hours. Like yeah. you have to pee and eat or whatever during that time period. And to do that, you have, you have to accrue enough lives. I think Huber's like this too. You have to accrue enough extra lives that you can take that time. Oh, and just let them and then, run out? Yeah, that and then you come back and keep playing and get this back again. That's really good. So you see Asteroids runs, and their lives are like all across the top of the screen. So they can walk away for two minutes or whatever and just get killed over and over again by Asteroids. Mark, what's the uh, the speed run world record on Asteroids? I have no, I don't know. Come on, Mark. It, it doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I thought it never. Ended. But I do think we should call arcade game arcade like that's not a great term. Uh, boardwalk like is probably better because <laughs> boardwalks <laughs> preceded arcades for, really for games. They called them sometimes. They called them Nickelodeons. Nickelodeon, yeah, Nickelodeon like. Maybe we should just go with that. Let's do that. Uh, right, that's a pretty good uh, good question, Justin from Snowy Idaho. Oh, what do you think Luminous is arcadey? That was another example I was thinking of. You can get stuck in a zone and play it for a long time, but mm. I think it's twitchy and 
It's a rhythm game, which is also very popular in arcades. You would p- piss people off if you put in a quarter and played that game in an arcade. <laughs> <laughs> it would be tuned. The difficulty would be tuned much higher in the arcade I, version, I think. Yeah, I would say no, because Luminous, at least in like a single player mode, it's not just like it gets harder as it goes, but it kind of ebbs and flows. That's like it true. gives you sort of moments of downtime, and it's sort of <clears> the game and the music is sort of having a little bit of a dialogue with you. We're like up, 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 and now here's a little cool down before it ramps back up again. We have Atari's version of Tetris in our arcade, our office arcade. Yeah, a nice original Tetris machine. Uh, well, it's a conversion, but it has a uh, Tetris. When you play it, it's not what you think. You know, it's not Game Boy Tetris, and yeah. there's no way to play it that way. You have to play. Well, it's always paired up with another person, and, let, and if you do play by yourself, that that screen just says so the person can join at any time, like a fighting game. But uh, it it change, It gives you like a garbage level, then it gives you a line goal level, then like another garbage level, and it's just a different game. It's really funny. It's like a puzzle <laughs> game that like you know is meant to kill you really fast, dude. <laughs> Tetris effect, is so amazing. good. You keep hearing good things about them. You should, yeah, you download it's really good. It. Yeah. Game made me cry. <laughs> wow, I'd much rather have. Does it hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just, just uh, very just emotional. I'm gonna wait for that the Puyo Puyo esports version it's supposed to be coming this year. Are you a lore hound for Tetris? <laughs> That brings us to video game 20 questions. I have no response to that. <laughs> Our suggestion this week comes from Andrew Campbell. He says he has a message. Hello. In past GameScoop video game 20 questions, the Omega Cops failed to guess my suggestion, Elder Scrolls Online, mm. and my brother's suggestion, Rampart. Mm. Now we are presenting a final challenge from the third and final sibling, <laughs> my sister. So Rampart. this comes from the sister Damn. of Andrew Campbell. Who and if, gotten, if she beats you... The final boss... Yeah, it'll be the trifecta of the Campbell, the Campbell family. Campbell kids, let the questioning begin. Mark, you can kick this one off. <laughs> uh, sure. Um, I don't want to do the dates thing. When I used to listen to Game Scoop before I ever worked here, uh, the fact that it always starts with the dates, I don't know, it always drove me crazy. It I'm doesn't. Sorry, it starts with hats every single week. <laughs> Start yeah. with the dates. No, I'm not going to do the dates. Uh, is this game... Uh, an open world game. When? No. Now we know that it's not an open world game. Yeah, I know that because Damon <laughs> just said no when you asked it's an so open world game. So we're good to go. <laughs> Thanks for that recap of question one. <laughs> we're down to 99.7% of all games that have ever existed. <laughs> well, I'm so flabbergasted still. <laughs> That you felt the need to clarify that. You, 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 you made it seem like it was a dumb question. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Well, for your final episode, it was a pretty good question. <laughs> <laughs> Is this game, <laughs> did this game come out on an optical media form? No. 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 <laughs> Is this game, is this a handheld game? Um, not in its original release. It's not. Gonna, we're, we're, going, save, we're going with the original release, which it's is not, not Nintendo Dogs. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. All right, I'm going to save the day. Does this game? Uh, did it come out after January first, two thousand? No. <laughs> I went for it. That's good though, because we don't. It's not a DLC now or yeah. whatever. <clears throat> so maybe cartridge or is this an ar- was this an arcade game at some point? No. Okay. That's five. Is this game? Did this game first release? Did the original release of this game come out on a 16-bit console? Yes. Cool. Uh, is this game exclusive to one platform? Well, y- yes. What? Every question. I'm just so judged. Yeah. I'm not yeah. judged. Sorry. Now we only know I didn't it's even, either on Sega or Nintendo. All I said was make a little noise. <laughs> I just made a little. But okay, let me. Okay, I made that noise yep, yep. because there's only two. I mean, there's like the Turbo Graphics, but realistically, there's only probably two so, 16-bit consoles that so would have been. So what you're saying on. is what I should have asked was, is it on exclusive to Super Nintendo? That was and the that subtext of the little squeak that, that came right. out, that okay. came out of my Got mouth. Well, I messed that up. So you're fine. That's why I. I mean, we were talking. We're having this dialogue now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But that's why I bit my tongue and chose not to get into any of that. Oh, it's fine. He's so, just looking at his watch. So my watch is <laughs> we know it was on one of the 16-bit systems only? Yeah. Okay. But we nice. don't know which one, as Justin has just let us <laughs> you know. know. <laughs> Should we narrow that down or go yes. something else? Was this on the Sega Genesis? No. All right. Uh, was this game it. published by Nintendo? Yes. Uh, 
dude. We're in a good place now. Yeah, we're totally that's, in a, that's well. Good. I don't want to jinx it, but uh, so a Nintendo made Super Nintendo game. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. Does this game have have a Mario character in it? A character from the Mario universe in it? No. That's ten. There were a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a that's half of them. This is this was kind of a cool one last week. We'll see if it pays off. Uh, is the main character of this game on the Smash Ultimate roster? Yes. Oh, we're doing great. Could be F Zero. Could be linked to the past. Well, who's the main character of F Zero? It's uh, Captain Falcon. Captain. It's E Honda. Or what's his name? That's not E Honda. E Honda. <laughs> no, what's his name? Samurai Goro. Goro. Yes. I know my. I'm up on my F Zero no, lore. Yeah. Uh, uh, you great. It could be Star Fox. Could be Star Fox. Well, is this is this game on the SNES Classic? Yes. Woo. Whoa! Well, there's only. We Are you racing? Have, basically, his you fingers that we have left. Eight we questions guess left. Each one. Are you them. racing space cars in this game? No. <laughs> it's probably Star Fox. Though. Are you? Uh, well, it could be Donkey Kong Country. Are you piloting an R wing in this game? No. Well, I, I was okay. <laughs> I was gonna say this has some weird new technology, so we could get Donkey Kong Country. Oh, okay. Uh, is this game made by Rare? No. Oh, guys. That's I don't want to. I don't want to botch this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, we're okay. good. It's Link to the Past. It. I mean, it sounds like it's yeah. Super Metroid, Link to the be. Past. I don't. I. Then th- th- that may be it. Um, I mean, right? Super Punch Out. He's Little Mac is also in. Yeah. Is Little Mac in? Is he's in the original Punch Out? But it's he also. Are you also Little Mac in Super Punch Out? I don't actually know. Yeah, because you're clear Little Mac. I think. <laughs> you're the wireframe. Yeah. Do you punch <laughs> in this game? Well, no. Okay. Damon's being nice to us. Yeah. Well, that eliminates uh, The Legend of Zelda, too. Do you uh, do you transform into a pink bunny in this game? What game is that? Link to the Past. Oh, really? No. Oh, we might not get it. Yeah. Maybe. I hope we don't. <laughs> Metroid? It's, it's either Super Metroid or uh, what was the other one I said? What? Donkey Kong Country? It's not Donkey Kong Country because it's not developed by Rare. You, oh, yeah. you oh right. So Super Metroid's still in the running. Kirby yeah. uh, Dream Course or Kirby's Avalanche. Yeah, oh, good point. Be, Which Kirby oh, was that? Oh, I really don't want to screw this up. We it's got overconfident. Kirby, it's <laughs> the Kirby, hubris. Kirby All Stars, the eight game one or something. <laughs> no, Dream Course Kirby, is. Yeah. I think yeah, there's a Kirby game. And I also think. Is this a Kirby game? Yes. Oh. Okay, so, oh. so it's either Dream Course. So we got this. It's either Dream Course or the what's uh, the other one? I th- isn't it called All Stars? The one with the, one the eight the, games. I don't. Or whatever? I don't collection? think it's in Classic Collection. I think mm. it's Dream Course in Classic Collection, right? Well, Dream Course definitely is. Is this uh? Is this like a weird take on golf? No. All right. So it's Kirby <laughs> All Star. Well, I don't know. I don't. Is, re- is that what it's called? I don't think that's in. I don't think that's the one that's in there. I thought it was. Maybe not. Is it Kirby's Dreamland 3? It is, because I bought it, I remember, to complete my my collection. And then it came out on, yeah. It's called Kirby Superstar. Okay. Yes. Is this Kirby Superstar? Yes. (laughs) 20 questions. Got it right on the last one. Well done. Nicely job. You know what's cool about, we've talked about this in Game Scoop, but you probably haven't heard about it in a long time. I got a cartridge that, because I found out it was one of the few games I didn't have in the collection. Hmm. So I got it, and it has um, this really cool Metroid-like game in it uh, where you explore these mines, right? But in that, you get little uh, items from these other Nintendo series. Mm-hmm. So you get like a thing from Samus's, maybe the Maru Maru or something. Mm-hmm. What is that what it's called? The, the rollerball. Ball. And then uh, that you get an um, a Earthbound trinket. And then the whole thing, though, is very similar to Smash Brothers, which is made by the same team same very game. shortly after because it was like a Nintendo Warship mm-hmm. project. HAL like, Laboratory. Cool. Yeah, you can definitely. Yeah, that's actually a really astute observation. Is that how did this not that many years before <laughs> Smash? It was like two because years. it was a very very late Kirby, or, you know, SNES game. Yeah, 1996. And like, yeah, they were already playing with that crossover. And that's that's actually why you like, can feel the Kirby love. In the Smash same. To this day. Yeah. yeah, the same year that the Nintendo 64 came yeah. out. Yeah. One second. And also, uh, Kirby Superstar is amazing. By the way, I always I spent hours with my friends doing the what's the uh, like the the There's samurai a, like just the time just press the button as fast. And as that's you can. similar to like the punching bag game and yeah. like the early Smash Brothers and stuff, mm-hmm. like the mini games. In it. It's very very good crossover there. I never played Superstar until you got it and brought it into the office. Yeah, and played yeah. it at your desk. One yeah. of my one of my buddies had it and it was like our go to game. It was great. It's got like it's like it's eight games in one, which is a little misleading because like five of them are like yeah. you know weird little mini games, but there are like three full games. The platform in it. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was this uh, family that we? The Campbell family. Campbell, we've okay. defeated so Campbell Challenge. Well, their terrible reign is at an end. One for <laughs> one out of three. Yeah, that's true. 
Uh, thank you for the suggestion, Andrew. And that about wraps it up for this week. Uh, if everybody, if you are a Far Cry fan, enjoy playing Far Cry New Dawn this weekend, or Crackdown, or maybe Anthem, or maybe Jump Force, or. Or, or, Metro. or Metro. Something or Metro. There's something mm-hmm. for everyone. Meanwhile, Justin's still playing Trails in the Sky. <laughs> Trails in the Sky. <laughs> Almost every night. How's the lore in that game? The lore, that's actually the best part of the game. Yeah. Good lore hound. Mm. Uh, for, lore, for lore hounds, I recommend it. Uh, um, Mark, you're going to play Metro? I, I think I want to try Metro because I can't play Anthem on Friday because I... Uh, have a have a group. Bring up the a, chart. A, a core group of friends, exactly. Wow. Uh, that I play those online games with. That I played the demo with, and uh, you are just you're screwed as a PlayStation guy. You have to wait till final release. That's a really interesting dynamic, or like social dynamic of like I could play this game yeah. early, but I can't because I'm I have a crew that I'm going to run through the game with. Yeah, that's like, like that's I like wanna, couples having a show they watch together. Yeah, I want to yeah. play with with my dudes, and well, and it's just like platform. I guess I don't want to say like loyalty, but for the most part, like. I'm going to play the game on PlayStation. So it's one of those sure. things where it's like, even though I have a pretty good gaming PC, I know I'll start over when I get it on PS4. And Xbox and PC has the early release garbage, right? And they're the ones that you can play yeah. it on the 15th. Yeah. But to be fair, you can only play it for 10 hours, uh, which is... It's more than I, mean, I played most games. It's a lot of time so. still, but it's not <laughs> it's like longer the game than the is Far Cry out. New Dawn campaign. Like, like most people will get the game on the... Yeah. <laughs> most people will get the game on the 15th and by the weekend... It'll it will be locked to most people, mm, yeah, and and they'll be they'll all be in the same boat as me. I've absolutely watched a show that I knew I'd have to watch again just because I wanted to watch oh, it that bad. I find I've had I've done that too. So I heard I think it's I saw up on, to you whether you decide whether to tell your friends if you. Right. Play. <laughs> I think I saw on Reddit that someone's parents right. watch a show together and they caught their dad watching the show early and it's like don't tell your mom. But then the mom was also sneaking the show and watching it early, so then they both watched it again oh. <laughs> without telling each other. Oh no! I used to I used to tell my wife if I had to go to work and and she would stay home, uh, I would be like, hey, I need you to watch like two episodes of like we were really addicted to like the following the Kevin Bacon show, and I'd be like, I need you to watch like two episodes because. I watched them last night, and wow. so I need you to catch up. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Show assignments. Uh, Sam, you spent some time with Kingdom Hearts. What's what's next for you? Uh, I have to decide out of these games uh, for this weekend, and I was going to ask you, do I have to just play Far Cry 5 before I play this? You don't have to. I did not. But you, you I mean, like you'll get more I, out of it if you had, but you don't have to. Yeah. yeah, I played about two or three hours of Far Cry 5, yeah. and this game fills... Pretty standalone. What what you should do is you should go watch the ending of Far Cry Five. Yeah, that's probably it. Right. Just watch right. the ending and you uh, should be. I'll good. almost certainly then play Anthem this weekend. Anthem, cool. wow. Well, I love Bioware. It's amazing. I just think they've made some bad games. New Bioware game. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm actually excited yeah. for that. Only be, and especially because like uh, Miranda has been telling me like, oh, it feels very Bioware yeah. when you play this stuff. And that's I'm like, like oh, such oh, an okay. underrated yeah. part sure. of like like Anthem sort of become this like thing on its own mm-hmm. that it's easy to forget. Like, ah, oh, it's the next big new Bioware game. Yep. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll <clears throat> always give that company you know a chance. So. Have you played Anthem yet? No. Well, yeah, I have played it. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's it. very fun. Yeah. Very fun to play. It's literally the best Iron Game, Iron Man game ever made. Have you ever played Iron Man on the on the Xbox no. 360? No. Is that better than Anthem? You think? What the hell, Probably. man? Probably. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I would assume. I I I thought those games were like, they're seven. Not good. No? Seven means good. Yeah. I, I think you're probably in safe Might territory declaring yeah. it the best Iron Man game. It but just t- it just tickles just like, me that you didn't play. <laughs> have you ever? How played do you one? know? <laughs> have that's, you ever played great, an Iron Man game? That's a great. <laughs> point. <laughs> no, now that I think about it, I don't think so. Like, unless you count like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, like I don't yeah. think I've ever played. But I thought I wrote the guides for two Iron Man games. Yeah, yeah. The Wii one is the worst guide I ever wrote. The worst game. You I've wrote ever a bad played. guy. Why didn't the you write a better game guy? I've ever played for work. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a pretty good guide. You know what? I couldn't find a collectible in that game. I remember, and it took me like weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that wasn't my full time job at and the then time. When you finally it. found it, it was so worth it. So oh, I was so mad. <laughs> Uh, and those like dumb like logs you had to destroy. It was like the stupidest game. Mm. For me, I, I'm gonna try to bring Assassin's Creed Odyssey home. Mm. I, I feel like I've I'm at 69 hours into the wow. game. Wow! So like I wanna. I feel like all right. I wanna wrap this thing up. Yeah. I I did beat it. I did love it, but I did enter wrap it up mode in the home stretch. I'm like okay. Wrap it up. Mm. I like doing that. 
I've also started Game of Thrones over from the very beginning. I've been watching that. And uh, if anyone out there has considered trying to do that before uh, the final season begins, I highly recommend it. It's, I've, I've thought it's, about it's it. It's amazing. Do you have I just to watch it know. with your wife? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know yeah, who, like, the it. second time through, do you have a new, like, you understand yeah, it's like, the politics? It's like, of- oh, Uncle Benjamin was all over the first season. Now <laughs> I get it. Because, like, yeah. Previously, when he like reappears, like you're eight like, years Who the ago, this guy, Renly and Stannis, finally makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything is good. Yeah. I definitely there's so much I didn't remember. <laughs> I have no memory of that. <laughs> I gotta go back and watch. It. Anyway, highly recommended. You've been thinking about it, and that is all the scoops we have for this week. <laughs> thank you, Justin. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dan. The studio. My name is Damon. This is IGN Game Soup. We're out.